Hey, I'm Cliffy B from Epic, designer of Gears of War, and I'm going to talk about the game today and sell you on it. Okay, Gears of War takes place on a planet called Sira, which is very similar to Earth. And life was very, very good on Sira until one day a new energy source was discovered called emulsion, which initially seems like a great thing, but this wound up being the catalyst for a series of wars that went on on the planet, when a horrible enemy called the Locust Horde came from the underground of the planet. The player plays as a character named Marcus Phoenix, who was jailed for disobeying orders back in the day. He went to help out his dad instead of taking his orders from his CO as he should have. Ultimately landed military prison, and now he's being busted out of prison by his best friend Dom, so he can be enlisted to fight in the war against the Locust. You've seen cover in other games, right? But you haven't seen so many games where you really have to take cover. If you run right up to a Locust in Gears of War, you're going to get shot, right? Because if you were in World War II and you ran up to a Nazi, you'd get shot. You burst into the room, you see your enemy, your enemy takes cover, you take cover, and then a real gunfight actually ensues after that, in which you're trying to flank them, you're trying to flush them out, you're ordering your squad mates, and it's very, very fast-paced but tactical at the same time. One of my concerns about the industry in general now is that there's a lot of like hardcore gamers who want something that's really, really tricky to get into and very, very tricky to master. But we, we've lost a whole generation of casual gamers. I think Gears has the potential to kind of bring some of them back by just being beautiful in general. And if we do the job that we're planning on doing with the game as far as context sensitivity and not necessarily initially requiring too complex of a control scheme, by I think we could kind of get a larger audience for the game. Animation is one of the areas where we're really, really pushing things. You have very, very believable humanoid characters. A guy who's wearing 80 pounds of armor slamming into the wall looks like what it is. It looks heavy, it looks real, it looks tangible. And then you have creatures in the world that move in an eerie, believable fashion that are climbing on the ceiling, or multi-legged creatures. I mean, this has been a project that the animation department and the art department has really been able to spread their wings and kind of fly and soar and show people what's possible with the next generation. For Gears, the focus from the get-go has been a great single-player game that then you can leverage into co-op. We are working on a versus multiplayer mode, but we're not really at the point where we're really to kind of reveal too much about that right now. But the single-player experience that you play in co-op is the same experience. So if I'm player one and I'm playing as Marcus, and I'm playing with my best friend Dom, he's AI controlled. But if my friend joins on live or hops or you know comes over to my living room and picks up a controller, they can press start and take over Dom, and then we can continue to playing through the game seamlessly throughout it, which is one of the coolest things about it. In making this game, we've had the whole idea of what we want the game to be, but we also know what we don't want it to be. I don't want the player to be fighting bugs on the floor for the first half of the game. I want him from the beginning to be fighting cool and compelling creatures. The one game cliche we had to have in the, in, in the game was a minecart ride. I'm sorry, we, we, had, we had to do it. I mean, it's, it's, it's like Space Mountain with guns and there's creatures jumping on your cart and you actually are taking cover inside the cart. So although we are doing a minecart ride, you're taking cover in the cart. So we're still taking that idea of twisting any sort of existing formula. One of the weapons is called the uh, Hammer of Dawn, and this is like our big kind of laser weapon for the game. One laser weapon in the whole game, by the way. It's an orbital laser platform, and you target uh, one spot in the world, which takes a few seconds for the satellites to triangulate the location, and then, boom, the big finger of God comes down, which you can then drag through and drag behind cover onto your enemies. But the catch is, if two guys target one location at once, co-op players or AIs with you, right, what you wind up with is a beam that's four times larger, four times more powerful, that you're both then trying to steer through the world. And so then if you both cooperate and steer it right, it'll move quickly and fry your enemies. But if one guy goes right and one guy goes left, the beam's not going to go anywhere. So it's very much this uh, two-headed monster type of weapon that you get to use. Hey guys, thanks for uh, listening and uh, hearing the, the rant, the pitch, and uh, checking out the visuals and following and being excited about Gears of War. And we hope to see you on Emergence Day 2006. I'm Mike Caps. I'm the president of Epic Games. I'm in charge of development for our two game projects, Gears of War, Unreal Tournament 2007, and also our engine team. So we started about 15 years ago in Tim Sweeney's parents' basement. Uh, so it was a garage startup. Uh, he made some early games as the art director as well as designer and programmer. Um, and uh, we did a little bit of shareware work, you know, bring publishing other folks' titles. Um, 
about nine or ten years ago, Cliff Blazinski joined, and that was with the Jazz Jackrabbit series, which has done quite well for us. Um, other milestones include Epic Pinball, that was one of the big ones, that really financed uh, Unreal's development. Unreal started about 95 or so and shipped in late 97. Uh, it was a huge hit. I, I played that game and absolutely loved it. Um, I think it was the most beautiful uh, shooter of the time. Uh, that engine, we started licensing. Epic started licensing right after that was released. Uh, UT came out in 99, Unreal Tournament, and that was another really big success for us. Uh, it was on multiple platforms, Dreamcast, uh, PlayStation 2, and of course PC. Primarily a PC franchise, and yet another multi-million seller, yet another game of the year. Uh, really excited about that. And we've been working on the Unreal franchise ever since. Uh, UT 2003, UT 2004, UT 2007 is coming. Um, you might notice it looks like a rut, but we've got another game coming, which is Gears of War, uh, which is an exclusive for Xbox 360, which is uh, coming out in 2006. Unreal Engine 3, of course, we've amped up the graphics. I mean, if you look at a game like Gears of War, I don't think there's a game that better shows what the visuals of next generation games can be. Uh, but beyond just uh, graphics, uh, this is a true cross-platform engine. Uh, we're handling all the scary multiprocessing work of uh, the multiple processors on the Xbox, the cell processors on the PS3. We do that for developers now, so they don't have to, don't have to worry about that as much. Um, uh, we do live on the Xbox 360. We have uh, server browsers, you know, UT style, find players online kind of things happening in the PC space. Uh, but I think the biggest change is going to fully seamless worlds. So that means that we have games from massive multiplayer styles. Uh, Lost Odyssey is a large RPG which is being developed on our game. Huxley is sort of a shooter, massive multiplayer game that's being built on our tech. So we've kind of really expanded the types of games you could build on the engine. It's not just about shooters anymore. We've got fighting games, racing games, sports games, you name it. One of the coolest things we've done with Unreal Engine 3 is I've been talking about tools that put so much power in the hands of artists and level designers. What that means is we're putting that power in the hands of our mod community too. Right? When we put our game out and we give you script access and the level editor access, you're going to be able to make mods that are commercial quality products. Right? As long as you don't need to do anything crazy with changing the way network works or something like that. If you can take a game that we give you, like a Gears of War or a UT 2007, and just change the gameplay, you'll be able to make an entire single player game without writing a single line of code. So that's huge because mods are awesome. Uh, you know, we, we get so much feedback from those guys that that's why we keep making those tools because we want them to make the cool mods that push us and that we make better games and it gives our games a longer lifetime on the shelves because there's great reasons to go buy it again for free. Three things about Cliff you may not know. He's a really good kisser. <laughs> um, you wouldn't think because he's a small guy, but there's just something about him. Cliff works really hard. You know, it's that it's you think of a guy like that who he's famous and he gets a lot of attention for what he says about games or what he says not about games. He works really, really hard. He cares so much about the interactive experience and getting the team on board. He's the best I know at having the team listen to him and he says, this is my crazy idea and they work back and forth with him and come up with stuff like Gears of War. And oh, he cries like a girl. Um, just, he just can't, he can't, throw, can't throw a baseball. You feel bad for him. You played a lot of video games as a kid, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, I'm so damn excited about Gears of War, and I'm really glad you guys came out to Raleigh to check it out. Thanks.